This is five on your side at five, focused on you. The cold temperatures today mean yesterday snow is sticking around. Viewer Sharon Hill shared this photo of a beautiful sunrise in Darden Prairie. Over in the Metro East, viewer Jill Kaysen shared how her horse and donkey we're all bundled up. Thank you for joining us at five. I'm Brent Solomon. The temperatures barely made it past 30 degrees today. Let's get over to weather first meteorologist Gary Frank to tell us when things will warm up. Yeah, it's a matter of time and we're going to start to see some of the snow melting. So I'm glad to see people out enjoying, uh, you know, Art Hill there because, you know, this is the this is good sledding snow, good snowman snow. And it's really the last day it's going to look like this. So enjoy this while it lasts not only uh, tonight, but tomorrow morning because then and we're going to start to melt things away pretty quickly. So uh, as we've seen that fresh snowpack, we start out at 14 degrees. It was even colder to the north as we zoom in locally. We had a few spots like Litchfield at seven. So with that fresh snowpack, our temperatures really plummet. So that is often the case. Um, however, we didn't warm up all that much. So obviously a colder air mass, but you know, with snowpack around, you can see where it snowed from Indy all the way to St. Louis, Columbia, not as much snow in Kansas City. They only got about an inch, so uh, pretty significantly different. You can see where that snowpack makes a difference. However, the key for us is that west breeze. Look at Lincoln and Wichita. Temps in the mid 30s, upper 40s. Uh, that snow is gone. We've got sunshine, and today we're going to drop quite as much. Maybe some areas in the teens, but I think low to mid 20s overall, but then things warm up quickly. So that's what we'll talk about, how we continue to push close to 70 degrees at least a couple of times, and snow is a big time afterthought. All right, Gary, we'll see you then. Just hours ago, Kansas City leaders and gun control advocates gathered to rally against gun violence. Moms demand action joined the groups every town and students demand action to mourn Wednesday's mass shooting and to call for change. That shooting happened at the Chief Super Bowl parade in Kansas City. Radio DJ Lisa Lopez Galvin was killed in the shooting. Dozens others were hurt. Two teenagers have now been charged. Authorities have not identified them. Gun control advocates say they want to see measures to prevent this from happening. You'll hear more on their message coming up in one hour. Confusion at the St. Louis Galleria this afternoon. Richmond Heights police say they got multiple calls for shots fired. After responding, they learned the shots were mistaken for a group of pro-Palestinian protesters banging on a set of drums. Again, no gunshots fired at the St. Louis Galleria. The mall is open. Well, the man accused in the deadly downtown crash that killed a mother and daughter is now out on bond. 22-year-old Monty Henderson was released yesterday. He's charged with manslaughter. Court documents say he was going more than 70 miles per hour down Olive before speeding through a red light early Wednesday morning. The victims had just left a concert at Enterprise Center. Five on your side is hearing from their relatives this evening. They say, quote, this man should not have been able to go home after only two days, and he took two lives. They also say they want to see accountability from leaders. You can read their full statement on KSDK.com. Right now we're learning more about a shooting in North City that sent a 12-year-old to the hospital. It happened just before 1 a.m. on Newhouse near Blair Avenue. The boy went to the hospital and is expected to be okay. At this hour, no word on a suspect. Well, if you want to take a deep dive into black history in St. Louis, you can head to North County this weekend. The St. Louis County Parks and Rec Department is hosting a traveling exhibit on slavery. Our Travis Cummings explains. Yeah, isn't that that guy who, uh, 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 and then they'll say something really crazy. Right? <laughs> Wasn't he a lawyer? Or, oh, I think I saw him a few weeks ago. That's how people react when the name Dred Scott comes up. Really one of the best ones ever was somebody said, have you ever met him? Mm -hmm. And I'm going, <laughs> not yet. But Lynn Jackson can tell you who he really is. This guy is actually my great-great-grandfather. Jackson's tightening up loose ends for anyone who wants to learn about her great-great-grandfather this weekend. Scott, an enslaved African-American man who, along with his wife Harriet, unsuccessfully sued for the freedom of themselves and their two daughters in the Dred Scott versus Sanford case of 1857, known to many as the Dred Scott decision. 
That decision heavily influenced the nomination of Abraham Lincoln to the Republican Party and his second election, which in turn led to the South's succession from the Union and the Civil War. After the Supreme Court's decision, Scott's former master's sons purchased Scott and his wife and set them free. Scott died nine months later. 13th Amendment ended slavery. 14th gave citizenship to all who were born in the United States, including ex-slaves. And 15th gave the black man the right to vote. Through her voice and old artifacts, Jackson's informing people at a fight for freedom. A two-day event at the North County Rec Complex featuring the exhibit Slavery in St. Louis. It's just to get the public to actually know more about, you know, black studies, black history, and kind of the legacy of fighting for freedom that most people don't hear. Making sure St. Louisans never lose sight of the fight. Travis Cummings, Five on Your Side. And that exhibit is actually free. It will be open tomorrow from 12 until 5 p.m. Donald Trump is taking his legal battles to the Supreme Court. The local Republican warning against his effort to be granted immunity.